on this computer. Okay, so let's begin with an Article 1179. So every obligation whose performance does not depend upon a future or uncertain event or upon a past event unknown to the parties is demandable at once. Every obligation which contains a resolutory condition shall also be demandable without prejudice to the effects of the happening of the event. So dagan kayog mga terminologies dere na you will not understand it if you just read the provision. So you have to delve deeper into what um, the author has provided for us or to the legal luminaries as to the meaning of this provision. Now, when you talk, when you tackle about Article 1179, you have to know what is the meaning of a pure obligation. So a pure obligation is one which is not subject to any condition and no specific date is mentioned for its fulfillment and is therefore immediately demandable. So some may example concerning pure obligation. So you have here an example. D obliges himself to pay C 1,000 pesos. So claro sa example na the obligation is immediately demandable because there is no condition and no date is mentioned for its fulfillment. Unsa pa? D binds himself to pay C 1,000 pesos upon demand of C. So the obligation is immediately due and demandable because it is made upon the demand of C. So this is what you call a pure obligation. Muning ginapasabot sa first paragraph under Article 1179. Now if an obligation whose performance does not depend upon a future or uncertain event, or upon a past event unknown to the parties is demandable at once. So that is what you call a pure obligation. So I will give you this car. So immediately demandable you dahil ang imuhang obligation because there is no condition plus there is no event or specific date as to when will you will give the car. Kaya imuhang condition, ang imuhang obligation man is I will give you this car. So automatic, it is a pure obligation because it does not have a condition and it has no specific date. So claro, a meaning is a pure obligation. All right. Nampute ginatawag na meaning. Nampute ginatawag na conditional obligation. So what is a conditional obligation? It is one whose consequences are subject in one way or another to the fulfillment of condition. So na condition, you will perform this, you will do this, you will give this, you will not do this if, the, if a condition has been uh, given. So some example. But first you have to determine or define the meaning of condition. When you say condition, it is a future and uncertain event upon the happening of which the acquisition or extinguishment of an obligation or right subject to it depends. Now, here are some characteristics of a condition. It has to be future and uncertain. It may be a thing of the past, but it should be unknown. And lastly, it should not be impossible. When you say future and uncertain, in order to constitute to constitute an event as a condition, it is not enough that it be in the future. It must also be uncertain. So for example, uh, I will give you 2,000 pesos when the clock strikes at 12. So kana example, Anna. So uncertain. Unsa na 12? 12 midnight? 12 noon? So kana example, and it should be um in a future event now there are two principal kinds of obligation you have your suspensive condition and resolutory condition now when you say suspensive condition the condition precedent or condition it is also called as condition precedent or condition antecedent or one of the fulfillment of which will give rise to an obligation or right in other words, the demandability of the obligation is suspended until the happening of an uncertain event which constitutes the condition. So for example, 
I will sell you the land if it is adjudicated to me in the division of my deceased father's estate. Pasabot, ibalig yan ako ning yuta sa imuha if kaning yuta after sa um, proceeding sa pag hati-hati na mong mag-isuon kay mahadto sa ako ah. So that is the condition. So you have here Mubligan lang ka na mubaligya sa iya ha kung ikaw na ang nahimong tag-iya sa yuta. So, asa man diri ang condition? Ang condition diri is pag ikaw na ang nahimong owner. And ang obligation ni mo will only arise if you become the owner. So, the obligation to sell it to you will only be demandable kung nahimo na kang owner. So, that is what you call suspensive condition. The happening of the event or the condition will give rise to the obligation. So meaning, naan na kay obligation, ang obligation ni mo, demandable na, ang imong obligation is en punto na kung ang condition is na hitabo na. Claro ta, kung unsa ang suspensive condition. So kung may lait. Okay, I will give you this pencil if you pass the board exam. What if they pass the board exam? Then the happening of passing the board exam will give rise to my obligation to give you this pen. Let's say, can you pen? Can gold dining you the pen, diba? So that is what you call a suspensive condition. The happening of the event of a future event will give rise to the obligation. Eh, nag-chat. Hinay lagi boses ni mo. Ala. Di ni madunggan akong tingog? Madunggan man, sir. Madunggan? <laughs> okay, Jade, you're raising your hand. Sir, napis it lang, sir. Ah, okay. Sorry. Hinay lagi boses ni mo. Ala. Sorry, ha? See, I will try to make it louder. So, any question regarding suspensive condition? Wala. So, what's up other examples? Hatagan tigag sa kyanan kung mahimo kang certified public accountant. So, when you pass the board and become a certified public accountant, that is the event. So, The happening of that event, you becoming a certified public accountant, will give rise to my obligation to give you the car. So, I will give you this car if you become a certified public accountant. So, that is an example of your suspensive condition. Okay na. Sige. <laughs> All right. Next is the resolutory condition or what you call... Condition subsequent, the fulfillment of which will extinguish an obligation or right already existing. So, so my example, ani, kung ang suspensive, the happening of which will give rise to the to the obligation, ang mo ni balik tara, kabalik kabalik tara niya. The happening of the event will extinguish ino on the obligation. So, so my example. So D. Um, binds himself to give C 3,000 pesos monthly allowance until C graduates from college. So, unsa may unsa dere, unsa may uh, happening sa unsa may event ani. Pag mo graduate na C sa college, then maundang na ang obligasyon ni D na muhatag og monthly allowance of 3,000 pesos. So that means the happening of the event meaning the graduation of C from college, will extinguish the obligation of D to give 3,000 pesos monthly allowance to him. So, baliktad. Di ba? Claro ang resolutory condition? Yes, sir. So, when is an obligation demandable at once? Meaning, uh, Kanang mademanda, ini mo sa dayon. So, an obligation is demandable at once when the obligation is pure 
or when it is subject to a resolutory condition. So these are your examples of when an obligation may be demandable at once. If it is a pure obligation, meaning will I condition, or when the subject to a resolutory condition, meaning the happening of the event extinguishes the obligation. Mademan man mo siya dahil kay nawala, nahitabo naman tong event. Once nahitabo na tong event, then ang obligation ni mo demandable at once, meaning mas stop na siya. So that is what mo nang gi na under siya, under demandable at once. All right, Article 1180. When the debtor binds himself to pay, when his means permit him to do so, the obligation shall be deemed to be one with a period subject to the provisions of Article 1197. So, so my meaning any, sir? So you all go back first to what is a period. A period is a future and certain event upon the arrival of which the obligation subject to it either arises or is extinguished. The debtor promises to pay when his means permit him to do so. So this obligation should be deemed to be one with a period. In this case, what depends upon the debtor's will is not whether he should pay or not, for indeed, he binds himself to pay. What is left only to his will is the duration of the period. So ang pasabot, ani manggo, di ba? Na magiging utang sa tua. Ang ilahang linya magiging ani, bayaran ti ka kung naanak ko. Di ba, mauna inang linya firme? Kung naanak ko, meaning naanak ko yung extra money, or naanak na yung maghatag sa iyahad, na siya pondo. So when a debtor says that pag naanak ko, he means that he is willing to pay. And when he is willing to pay, when he says, pag naanak ko, it is as if he is telling you that he will pay you on a certain period. Now, that certain period will be, of course, a future and uncertain event. Meaning, wala ka ba kung kano sa kabayaran niya. So, in order for you to set this period, dapat ikaw, as creditor, should inform your debtor na, o oh, nag-ingon man ka na, when your means permit you to do so, kung naanak ka, pwede ba na ito iset ding imuhang pagbayad sa kuha on a certain date? So, mauna siya ang... Pasabot lang aning nabalaod. Now, if you do not, if you cannot agree with the debtor as to when a specific time na magbayra na mo, the court will always be happy to intervene in in behalf of you. So the court will fix the same on the application of either party. Meaning, if ang creditor gusto niya mo apply na mubayad siya ang iyang debtor on let's say two months after, then the court will fix the same. Depende kung kinsay mag mangayog application or kinsay mangayog tabang sa korte, ang debtor ba o ang creditor. So, kanang mga lin, sa mga, sa mga may laing linya sa mga sa mga mangutang. Yes, Jade, you raised your hand. Nakay pangutana. Hello? Wala? Okay. So, sa mga may lying linya sa sa mga humutang in order to bind himself to pay. Sige. Ano siya? Okay. Um, creditor, can I borrow from you money? And I will promise to pay you little by little. Ano sa pa? Mane, wala mo kung 10,000 ba? Bayaran tayo yung tika. As soon as possible. Isa pa. Pare, wala pa. Wala may kong 5 mil be. At aganti ka from time to time. Isa pa. At any time, I have the money. In partial payments. Hulugulugan na ko, mare, ang ako utang. Or when I am in a position to pay. So when he mentions, when the letter mentions these lines, he promises or binds himself to pay. But the question ng Ana is as to when. Meaning, unsay period. Kaniya pwede bayaran. So, as creditor, remember, you have to fix the period kung kanusan ni mo gusto i 
pabayad si debtor. Pwede po si debtor mag-fix og period kung kano sa siya pwede maghatag og bayad sa imuha as his creditor. And if kung maglalis mong duha, creditor, debtor, the court will decide kung kano sa niya i-fix ang pagbayad sa debtor sa creditor. Klaro? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Article 1181. In conditional obligations, the acquisition of rights as well as the extinguishment or loss of those already acquired shall depend upon the happening of the event which constitutes the condition. So this is very familiar, right? Actually, this is the provision which further exemplifies or further um, gives us the real meaning of a suspensive condition. So, what is the effect of happening of a condition? You could either acquire rights or lose rights, or you may lose rights already acquired. So, in acquisition of rights, in obligation subject to a suspensive condition, the acquisition of rights by the creditor depends upon the happening of the event. Diba? Now, for example, ikaw kay nagbuhat ka last will and testament sa imuhang um, eredero. But, gibutang ni mo dito na ma-alto lang ni sa imuhang eredero kung mamatay na ka within two years. So, kung sa may event ani, Pag namatay na ka within two years, then that is the time the obligation to pass on the property to your heredero will give rise. What else? Loss of rights already acquired. In obligation subject or resolutory condition, the happening of the event which constitutes the condition produces the extinguishment or loss of the rights acquired. So again, basic example there is the Provision of support to a college student. So X binds himself to support Y until Y graduates from college. So the happening of the event, meaning when Y graduates from college, will extinguish the obligation of X to support Y. So this provision will tell you what is a suspensive condition and what is a resolutory condition. So, dapat kabalo mo mag-differentiate between the two, ha? You have to remember that in suspensive condition, the happening of the event or the condition will give rise to the obligation. Whereas, in resolutory condition, the happening of the event or condition will extinguish the obligation or rights will be lost. Nalang na niya. Claro ang dif ang Difference a suspensive condition from resolutory condition. Hello? Claro? Yes, sir. Okay, moving on. Article 1182. When the fulfillment of the condition depends upon the sole will of the debtor, the conditional obligation shall be void. If it depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person, the obligation shall take effect in conformity with the provisions of this code. Now, so my person about adding Article 1182. If the condition depends upon the sole will of the debtor, ang condition is void, meaning um, null siya, dili siya pwede mahitabo or dili siya pwede ibutang diha sa inyong provision. Whereas, Kung ang condition depends upon chance or upon a third person or the will of a third person, then pwede siya mahimong valid. So may example on it. But first, let's define what is a potestative condition. So it is a condition suspensive in nature and which depends upon the sole will of one of the contracting parties. So that is what a potestative condition is it will the condition will only be is dependent upon the will of the 
debtor or one of the contracting parties. So say may tagbo if the suspensive condition depends upon the will of the debtor or one of the contracting parties. So the conditional obligation is void. So sa mga example aning it depends upon the will of the debtor. I will pay you if I want. Meaning, bayaran natin kung gusto na ako. So diba, it is very one-sided. So that's why the law prohibits these types of um, this type of conditional obligation. Okay? It is solely up dependent upon the debtor na to the point, hindi na siya gusto mag-perform sa iyang obligation sa iyang creditor. So that is the reason why the law prohibits um, conditional obligations which are dependent upon the will of the debtor. Dapat isa, casual condition. So morning magdepend sa chance or sa uh, will of the third person. So if the suspensive condition depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person, the obligation subject to it is still valid. So, so my example ani. So let's say si X is a building contractor. Di obligate ni ayang sarili kang Y owner sa isang building na Kaling si X ang mubayad sa, in, sa unsamang danyos na may tabo sa building kung na ay earthquake within 10 years from the time na na-complete ang construction sa building. So you have there, di ba, na, na ang earthquake banggod is dependent on chance. So pwede, pwede siya mag-earthquake, pwede po dili mag-earthquake. So if mag earthquake, so it's based on a chance. So the condition is based upon a chance, diba? Then that condition is still valid as um, per this provision. Now, what else? Number two, S binds himself to sell his land to B if he wins a case pending before the Supreme Court. Now, the winning of the case to, a, to the Supreme Court is also dependent upon chance. Why? Wala man takabalo if papindi siya or madaog. But if you base it on chance, the condition here or your obligation here is still um, valid. So muna example sa casual condition. The suspended condition depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person. So your obligation subject to it is still valid. Now, daghantag classification of conditions. As to effect that I get suspensive and resolutory, you already know that in suspensive conditions, the happening of the event or condition gives rise to the obligation. Whereas as to resolutory, the happening of the event or the condition extinguishes the obligation. So as to form, it may be expressed or implied. When you say express, the condition is clearly stated. Whereas implied, the condition is merely inferred. So you have to read between the lines pa ba kung unsa ding condition ni mo. Number three, as to possibility. So you have there possible conditions and impossible conditions. In possible conditions, the condition is capable of fulfillment legally and physically. Like for example, I will give you this pen if you um can walk or run from here towards that direction. So, possible, di ba? Kaya, kaya mag mo. Physically and legally, you can walk from here to that point of that direction. So, the, the condition is possible. So, it's an impossible condition. The condition is not capable of fulfillment legally or physically. So, mga um, contrary to law, morals, and um, public order, public policy. So example is, I will give you 1 million pesos if you kill the president. Okay. It is not legally, it is legally impossible and physically impossible for you to kill the president because first, you will be held criminally liable. And aside from that fact, ambot lang itay dog patay ang president, di ba? Di kasurandan anag unsa. Um, presidential staff group niya. Anyway, moving on. Sa pa. 
as to cause or origin. So again, you have their potestative. The condition depends upon the will of the contracting parties. Or you have your casual. The condition depends upon chance or upon the will of a third person. As to mode, it, it may be positive or negative. The condition consists in the performance of an act. Like for example, I will give you this car if you play the guitar. Piawa, no? Play lang guitar. Taga na kasi sa kenan da yun. Something negative. The condition consists in the mission of an act. So for example, I will give you this car if you do not date that girl. Oh, di ba? So kung hindi mo siya i-date, kanang girl na na, then I will give you this car. So that is an example of a negative uh, condition. As to numbers, we have conjunctive and disjunctive. There are several conditions and all must be fulfilled. So the gaga condition and kani po naman condition is na dapat kinahanglan i-fulfill ni mo siya in order to give rise to the obligation or to extinguish the obligation. Whereas in disjunctive, there are several conditions and only one or some must of one of them or some of them must be fulfilled in order for you to give rise the obligation or to extinguish the obligation. As to divisibility, you may have divisible or indivisible conditions. When you say divisible, the condition is susceptible to partial performance, meaning pwede mo siya i tunga tunga ang imuhang pagbuhat sa performance ng imuhang obligasyon. Whereas if it is indivisible, the condition is not susceptible to partial performance. So these are your different types of classifications of conditions. Any questions so far? None, sir. All right. Okay, so let's end there so that you can prepare for your exam on Wednesday. So, ready na mo? Make sure to study hard ha kay medyo gilisudan yun na po siya. <laughs>